What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten things you didn't know about WWE Payback. Uh, Payback is this coming Saturday, as I'm filming this right now. I'm gonna be honest with you. For the first time in quite some time, I'm not as excited for a WWE pay per view as I usually am. Um, this one is, is I don't know, it's it's kind of middle of the road for me there are some matches i'm looking forward to but i'm not excited for the overall pay-per-view as i have been for the other pay-per-views wwe has put on for the past i want to say almost year year and a half now um so we gotta check this out since you know pay, uh, payback is right around the corner i will be doing my preview and predictions on who's gonna win and how things may play out but uh ultimately payback has always been kind of a b level sometimes a c level pay-per-view in a sense it's never really just in my opinion been one of those must see pay-per-views but we'll see what happens this saturday right now get right into this one man appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel man and uh let's get right into this thing as WWE gets set to run its first payback event for three years, these six paybacks so far have got some cracking secrets and revelations hidden within them, such as why payback was initially cancelled, the mm. real story behind the House of Horrors, and why exactly payback is I forgot that payback hasn't been around in quite some time, so that's I forgot all about that actually that he just reminded me damn because we haven't had a payback in a minute so really tied to a certain feed me more fella with that in mind I'm Andrew from what culture wrestling and here are 10 things you didn't know about WWE payback number 10 the reason for payback's initial cancellation yes payback was reintroduced in 2020 but mm -hmm. why was the event removed from the WWE calendar in the first place the answer obviously that's when Roman Reigns uh won the uh, uh, the Universal Championship after coming back in. Uh, uh, we had this uh, long three-year reign. <laughs> That's crazy. He's been champ for three years. It comes down to the ever-fluid topic of WWE's brand split. Running as a regular pay-per-view from 2013 until 2016, 2017 saw Payback become a Raw exclusive event. Of course, the Superstar Shake-Up meant that this Raw event did feature SmackDown talent, but hey, that's forever the case when something involves WWE and a brand split. The 2018 Payback was intended to be a SmackDown-only pay-per-view, until a change of strategy saw those plans scuppered. That change of strategy was to move away from brand exclusive pay-per-views, which uh -huh. in turn meant less pay-per-views were needed by WWE. Payback was one of the events to get the axe. Number nine, Payback uh. 2014. Well, they brought it back. So hopefully this could be one of the better ones. Maybe one of the best paybacks we've ever had. Who knows? We're, we're going to see this Saturday. That broke a near eight year streak. Payback 2014 has the accolade of being the first WWE pay-per-view to not feature a men's world title match for nearly eight years. Prior wow. to that payback, the last time the top prize or prizes of the men's division wasn't defended on pay-per-view was back at Armageddon 2006, where WWE champion John Cena teamed with world heavyweight champion Batista to take on King Booker and Fit Finley in a match where neither world title were on the line. For the next seven and a half years, at least one of the company's men's world titles would be defended whenever each pay-per-view rolled around. That was, of course, until Payback 2014 brought a halt to that streak. The That's WWE crazy. title I didn't even and know that. World Heavyweight Championship had been unified as the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Mm -hmm. The trinket that Daniel Bryan would defeat Randy Orton and Batista for at WrestleMania 30. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Bryan was out of action due to neck issues by the time of Payback 2014, yeah, oh, which is why the WWE World Heavyweight title wasn't defended at that event. Sadly, the bribe would be Kate's goal just eight days after a payback, uh, which was headlined by the Shield versus Evolution. Number and that was good. I, I will say that there has been some good matches on payback. I'm not gonna sit up here and make it seem like paybacks always have, you know, it's you know had some trash matches or it wasn't worth the time. Eight Keith Lee's only singles WWE PLE win. 
Oh, we received damn. lots of approval from both Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar uh, during his initial appearances man. on the main roster. Big things appeared to be in the future for Keith Lee. What do you think NXT so. to Raw after SummerSlam 2020? Sadly, a mixture of Vince McMahon and some extremely serious health issues with Big Keith that yeah. made his spell on the main roster was a forgettable one. Discounting his time in NXT, Payback 2020 was as good as it got for Limitless's WWE Damn. as that Payback saw Lee score his one and only singles win on a WWE Premium Live event, which came over 14-time world champion Randy Orton. That's Chief would be on crazy. Raw's winning team at the Survivor Series that November, but Payback stands as the former NXT champion's sole one-on-one -on -one PLE win from his time on the main roster. Considering how many expected to see Keith Lee as a major player on yeah, WWE I was Premium Live so events too. for years to come, it's somewhat remarkable remarkable to reflect back on the role that Payback now has in Keith Lee's history. Number 7. Mr. Payback Shawn Michaels is of course known as Mr. WrestleMania, and mm -hmm. Bret Hart, Brock Lesnar, and Edge are just some of those in the conversation when looking for a Mr. SummerSlam. If there were to be a Mr. Payback though, that man would be Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns has the most appearances at Payback, competing six times, but mm -hmm. Rollins has a better record where this event is concerned. Of Roman's six outings, he currently stands at four for two. For Seth Rollins, he and Reigns retained the WWE Tag Team titles mm -hmm. against Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton in 2013. The Shield, as a full trio, defeated mm -hmm. Evolution in the main event of Payback Fantastic 2014. Match. The Architect would successfully defend his World Heavyweight title against Orton, Reigns, and Dean Ambrose in mm -hmm. 2015. There was a Rollins win over Samoa Joe in 2017 and Damn. Seth's only loss at Payback came in 2020 when he and Buddy Murphy were beaten by the Mysterios. Uh, As for wow. uh, Mrs. Payback, there sadly really isn't one as the only female to compete more than once is Bailey, and she's lost both of her Payback matches. Number Damn, six. I didn't even, that's crazy. That's a, a crazy little factoid. My boy Seth Rollins only lost one time at Payback. So He's supposed to have a match with Shinsuke Nakamura for the World Heavyweight Championship. Will he be 5-1? I'll give my uh, thoughts and opinions on that on my preview and prediction video. Randy Orton's awful payback record. Uh -oh. Orton is tied for second place with Rollins when it comes to the most appearances at payback, but the Viper remains winless in all Damn. five of his payback matches. As mentioned, payback 2020 saw Randall Keith lose to Keith Lee. Prior to that, 2017 was a loss to Bray Wyatt in the House of Horrors. 2016 had Randy Orton come up short in a four-way match for Seth Rollins' World Heavyweight title. 2014 had Randy part of that uh -huh. evolution that lost to The Shield. And 2013 had Orton unsuccessfully team with Daniel Bryan against the Shield, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns. Yeah, payback's not great for Randy. Yeah, Number not, five, apparently. less than one hour of women's wrestling. Of the six paybacks so far, the women's matches of these events total less than one hour. To be specific, WWE's ladies have wrestled for 57 minutes and 21 seconds cumulatively in the history of payback. Damn. AJ Lee defeating Caitlyn for the Divas title at Payback 2013, Paige retaining that same title against Alicia Fox in 2014, and Naomi and Tamina beating the Bella Twins in 2015. All of those matches clocked in at under 10 minutes. Alexa Bliss defending the Raw Women's title against Bayley in 2017, uh. and Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax beating Bailey and Sasha Banks for the women's tag titles in 2020. Those matches would just nudge over that 10 minute mark and the longest women's match in payback history happened in 2016. That 2016 event saw WWE Women's Champion Charlotte Flair take on Natalya in a bout which ran for 13 minutes and 4 seconds. And for those wondering, the shortest payback women's match was that Paige and Alicia Fox match with the anti-diva tapping out Foxy after just 6 minutes and 37 seconds. Less than one hour across six events. That's pretty darn horrendous. Yeah, nope. that's kind of <laughs> that lets that, that, that lets you know that lets you know how they how they used to view the women's division. Um, to be honest with you, they they still kind of like iffy on it. They it it could be so much better. It can be so much better. It, it's not that is. Is what it used to be because they used to not really care about the women at all. But in this case, it's like it's like they it's I can't even really describe it. It's like outside of the main few stars, everyone else kind of just don't really you know matter to to the to, to it seems like to the uh, to management. So I mean they are in a better situation. You know, but at the same time, the women's division could be so much more better. So that's crazy. Out of all these paybacks, all, the time of wrestling is still under an hour. That's 
insanity. Number four, the Ryback connection. To uh -oh. steal a line from Randy Savage, Ryback very much had a cup of coffee in the big time. Oh yeah. Dreadful impression, I know. But the oh, part yeah. of the former that Skip Sheckle returned from injury in <laughs> April 2012 with his new Ryback mantle, the powerhouse went on a tear through the roster. He While was definitely over. I saw Ryback come up short against then WWE champion CM Punk. He was a definitely over. Post WrestleMania 29, put the big guy up against John Cena, who by that point was once again WWE champ. At the first ever payback in 2013, Ryback was a major player, main evented against Cena for the WWE title mm -hmm. in a three stages of hell match. Headline in the pay-per-view against the biggest star of the modern era, it doesn't get much bigger than that. Skip ahead just three years and payback would again be noteworthy for Ryback, but this time for being his final appearance with WWE. Losing to Kalisto on the event's pre-show, Ryback and his pre-show stopper drunk soon departed the WWE due to a pay dispute. From the payback main event to the payback yeah, pre-show that's... is quite the journey. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. You go from the main event to pre-show status and then you out the company. That's kind of wild. In just three years. Number three, the Hitman's last ever sharpshooter. Payback 2016 has the honor of playing host to Bret Hart's final ever sharpshooter. Despite being forced to retire in 2000, there were still occasional moments where Bret got physical, such as putting mm -hmm. sharpshooter on Damien Sandow on a 2014 episode of WWE Main Event. As it stands though, the final ever sharpshooter of Bret Hart's career belongs to wow. Payback 2016, where the WWE Hall of Famer was in the corner of his niece Natalia as she challenged Charlotte Flair for the WWE Women's title. With Flair having her father in the corner, the excellent of execution was there to neutralize the nature boy. Natalia would get screwed on that night, but at least post-match she and Bret Hart got to lock in simultaneous sharpshooters. And what a sight it was. Number uh, one of those little factoids that's crazy. His last ever performed sharpshooter in WWE was at WWE uh, at a WWE event payback. So for those who was able to see that, you know, the, you, you got that memory if you remember it. The final WWE match for Cody Rhodes. At that 2014 event, Cody and Goldust came up short against Ryback and Curtis Axel. Left rocked by this loss, Cody followed the Owen Hart mantra of enough is enough and it's time for a change. Only that change initially involved Cody putting Sin Cara and then our truth with Goldust. With those partnerships not working out, Cody then debuted his face painted, bodysuit wearing, Damn. eccentric persona of Stardust. We'd had the legacy Cody, we'd had dashing and undashing versions of Cody, mm -hmm. we'd had the Rhodes Scholars Cody, and Payback 2014 had seen the final match for the Cody Rhodes name. The promotion was obviously extremely eager to welcome him back to the fold as Cody Rhodes upon the American Nightmare's return to WWE last year. Number one, the truth. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Once they changed him, I wasn't a big fan of it. I, I get it. They were kind of following the footsteps of his brother with the whole, you know, you know, Stardust, Goldust, you know, situation. I get it. But at the same time, I it was just one. And he made the best of it as much as he possibly could. But it just, for me as a fan, I, I wasn't a big fan of the character change or whatnot. And ultimately, after that, he ended up leaving WWE. And now. He's back and uh, he's one of the biggest stars in the company. One of the biggest baby faces in the company. So, you know, things happen for a reason. They were supposed to happen that way. And it's all come full circle. Truth behind the House of Horrors. Oh, While boy. Payback 2017 took place from San Jose, California's SAP Center. One match started away from that arena. Yes, that would be the House of Horrors match between the late Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. At the time, this House of Horrors was depicted, based on the time it took the competitors to return to the arena, as being approximately a 30-minute drive from the SAP Center. In reality, the drive from the payback venue to Wyatt's creepy old house would have been closer to 30 hours <laughs> rather than 30 minutes. As picked up on at the time by Sports Illustrated, the House of Horrors itself was located at 39115 Business 10 Highway, Richmond, Missouri. Not just that, but the property was also listed for sale at the time of payback 2017. How the hell did someone find this information? This is fucking insane to me. With a house available for the fairly modest sum of $36,000. Sure, the house and its outbuildings needed a bit of work, but $36,000 seems like a steal for someone wanted to make memories in the one and the same place where Randy Orton had a refrigerator dropped on him. So yeah. that's our 10 things you didn't wow. know about WWE Payback. Be sure to like, subscribe, the comment, share, turn those notification bells on, and come and give that... me a follow <laughs> on Twitter or X at WhatCoachW. Someone found the actual house and it's on sale for like 
36,000 or whatever. If someone buys that house, they can be like, yeah, this was the match where Randy Orton got a, a refrigerator thrown on him. You know? Memories, and Once again, rest in peace, Bray Wyatt. Like I said, for me, Payback has never been a pay-per-view. I just outwardly wanted to watch. But there always would be at least a match or two that I'm interested in and want to check out. And hopefully that's you know you know that changes this saturday hopefully i mean granted i'm not really just like super excited for payback but at the same time once again there are some matches i'm looking forward to seeing and i want to see you know what they're able to come up with and how things will play out so i'm interested in some of the matches and hopefully the show can entertain me enough where i can be like yo this is one of the best paybacks wwe's ever produced they've been doing some good work they have been on a roll still, in my opinion. Can they actually do this with this B-level type pay-per-view? We will find out this Saturday. Comment down below. Let me know. What's your favorite match from any of these paybacks? For me, obviously, got to be the Shield and Evolution. That was chef's kiss. Fantastic. But let me know your favorite match from a uh, WWE paybacks of past. Uh, in the past, uh, you know, whatever they were. You know, let me know which which match was your favorite and which year uh, it was. Which payback year it was. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still young. Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champion. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See you next one. Peace.